it's always, always about the sound more than the harmony, more than anything else. I will write something simple if it enables me to communicate a sound better. John Lyant was an opera, my very first opera. It was a chamber opera, so about seven musicians, five singers. It's a true story, an absolute gothic horror. And musically, it used a lot of instruments from the 18th century. Recorder, viola de gamba, really, really delicate instruments. All the time these very delicate sounds are playing, they're being manipulated live. It's as though you're hearing live instruments and live voices that are being sort of pulled like licorice and augmented and reversed and all of these things, which is stuff that probably is quite familiar to people that use a lot of Max MSP, but very unusual to hear it in opera. So one of the things I did was I worked a lot with spectralism and I did a lot of that via Max. So by spectralism I mean rather than thinking about harmonic structure, thinking about the spectral structure of the sounds that you're working with. I'd get the singer to sing things and then find ways to find out what the spectrum of certain words were and then get the violins to sort of stretch that out. And so it just sort of felt like very, very simple, but sort of like a shimmer that was going on all the way underneath. A lot of these very early instruments, like the gamba and the recorder, what I love about them is they have a, a fragility of tone, the fragility of timbre. They're always slightly on the edge of cracking the sound. And it's like they've got a richness in them that's been ironed out by these so-called improved instruments, interesting inner worlds that have been ironed out. folk music and sort of classical music tradition. That's how I first started performing as a kid was in folk clubs. But I've also got a background in electroacoustics. But it's interesting, I don't you don't find me working with sine waves and square waves. I mean I'll do it if I need to, but that doesn't interest me because the real world is its own best model. You get so much richness from the real world. Why would you model it when you, you know you've got all this richness for free? I've always been in dialogue with other instrumentalists and so I wanted to be in dialogue with what's happening on the laptop. So I started bringing robotics into my work mainly because um, I wanted to have a physical instantiation of my music in the room but I've only got two hands and the one that you'll see the most that I go out with is the Ealing Feeder which is a robotic polyphonic carillon. And for me, what's great about having that is that Max and the robot doing what they're good at, which is performing beyond the envelope of human performance. And the humans are bringing in the real world richness, the sort of data into Max. And that sort of works for me. giant I've realized that what I really want to do is explore much more deeply how sound can get under the skin what I'm thinking about is creating a situation where you feel that you're in the middle of something that you don't fully understand and you're, you're feeling the kind of jeopardy you would feel if you were seeing a really really good supernatural film that's what's exciting me at the moment is finding what the elements of sound are that can do that and it's very, very finely balanced because it's all about the art of the almost, what you almost reveal to people in sound. A few years back, I studied 
cognitive science and I was really taken by the work of uh, inactive perception and this idea that you know you can't silo the senses you can't say you hear that and you see that and you know that actually um, ex human experience is the sum of all the sensory data that's coming in all the sense data that's coming in as we're sort of moving through the world and so it's very exciting the fact that sound you know you hear it as well as feel it I think what I'm after is connection and if you can find ways for sound to influence vision and vision to influence sound or sound to influence where you feel physically you know of a, a proprioception thing or a you know feeling on your skin then it's it's like sound is firing on all the cylinders it can and it starts to get very exciting I would say, and this is a general point really, simplicity gets you a lot further. So like if you make something, you might think, oh, I want to make it, it does this and it does that. And when I lift that up, it does that. And when I move this slider, it does that. What you'll end up with is a thing that's got so many variables, it might as well be random. And actually what I have discovered is if you pair things right, right down, the absolute basic like you know if you're starting out literally on the level of I'm gonna make a sound or I'm gonna play a existing bit of music and I'm gonna make a slider that enables me to start it in different positions or that enables me to slow it down and speed it up just something as simple as that you kind of find that the similar the cause and effect the more possibilities there are to perform with it I mean I'm a theremin player and we've just got two things we've got volume and pitch <laughs> and that is it but because it's so simple you could take a lifetime to learn it and it's incredibly expressive and so to me less is more and so don't get beaten up about um thinking you've got to make a thing that looks like you know spaghetti junction actually just get one idea and then go to the help files and that's the obvious thing and when I teach Max, I always say to people, the greatest thing of all is that you can go to the help file and just cut and paste them. And the day that you realise that when you're starting out, it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so that's my thing. If you like to look at something in the help file, just cut and paste it. And you probably don't have to do too much. You can have a whole performance out of one, one idea. Mm -hmm.